Hi, Jeremy Cook here. And I was having a bit of a problem with my CNC router, so I decided to make this PCB to tell me what kind of signals were going in and out of it at any one time. Worked really well, so follow along to see how I made it. Yes, I'm calling this a parallel letonator, and you know, it's all designed in, in KiCad. I, I designed it so that I could tell whether the signals were going in and out of the machine, and just to see if it was a, a router problem or a computer problem. And this pretty much tells me and adds some new blinking lights. Gotta give a big, a big shout out to Anul and Brian Locke for helping me figure out what I could do with this, how to actually design it. And of course, to you know who for, for the name. So there is just, just controlling my router lights. You know, they're, they are blinking a little bit. I assume it's blinking a little faster than you can even see. So this is the design on KiCad or KiCad, depending on how you pronounce it. It all comes out as a rat's nest, which seems like a pretty appropriate description. Started out with five millimeter LEDs and then these resistors. Raised them all and as you can see, just it really turned out really wide. Needed to save some space, both for aesthetic purposes and to save some money. So there I am routing everything. You know, you got one layer is the, the green and one's the red. Not gonna go with the four layer board, they'd just be ridiculous. It was a good learning process for me because it's by far the most complicated PCB that I've made so far. You know, to the, those of you that do this every day or even every other day, this is probably probably nothing to you guys, but but to me it was, you know, an awesome awesome development. So assigning all the footprints there, and then had to clean it up a little bit more. Switched to three millimeter LEDs to save some space. As you'll see a little bit later, I. I Learned a few other tricks after I'd actually designed it. So, you know, if, if I decide to actually, I guess, semi mass produce this, probably what will come out is, is a smaller board with a little bit more compact frame. So routing everything there for the three millimeter LEDs, looking pretty good. Like most of my designs, it looks kind of like a spaceship. I guess it's kind of a, maybe a trademark. I, I don't know. So seen it 3D, that looks pretty good. A little check, 3D again, and yep, looking pretty good. The parallel connectors, obviously, they're not going to be quite hanging out in space like that. So I ordered it from Osh Park, and then a week or two later, got that back with a custom, custom sticker, which seems like it's probably some sort of limited edition, I assume. So test out the red LEDs, no resistor there, so sorry about that. Gotta check things, make sure it's grinding out okay, which it did. Basically all the signals go pass straight through and this, this will act as a gender changer as well as as well as a signal indicator. So put all the LEDs in. This was a little bit more work than I anticipated actually. First time putting these many LEDs in and soldering them up. Nonetheless, there's my concrete solder squid, which is Cool project, I love having a, a solid base for that. I'll put a link to that up in the upper right hand corner so you can check out how to do that. I made a 3D printed mold for it to make it look nice, but really you could just use anything. I mean, you could even use a, a bucket, I guess, just as long as you sink some, some lock line style coolant hose in there. So that done, all the, all the red soldered up, it was time for the blues. Same general procedure here, stuff them all in after checking them and then soldered. Looking good, was kind of getting my process but down by that point. So as it went on, it took a little bit less and less time. You know, solder him down and then I could even flip him up with the with the soldering iron itself. Obviously, if you have some better techniques, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll be happy to listen or maybe it'll help out somebody else. Clipped everything off and then it was time for the resistors. Comparatively speaking, these resistors were extremely easy just because you don't have to tell between the positive and ne the negative for anything and they're pretty much going to work. These are 10k resistors so basically the the signal goes straight through as it would before but through a 10k resistor it goes to ground as well and that lights up lets the LEDs light up. Again shout out to Brian Locke that was his suggestion that I use a 10k resistor on that. I was a bit skeptical as to whether that would work. So here I'm just finishing up the, the soldering on the actual parallel connectors. Now we get to see if it works. So we get to see if it works and 
as I made this video, it did work eventually, but right here, I'm just trying to test out to make sure it works initially, just to make sure I'm not, I'm not chasing down a problem that I don't actually have with the thing. That, that's somewhere else I should say. So take that off, plug it in. And look at that, we got red and red and blue lights. That's, that's a really good sign. Of course, we need to actually see if it actuates the router itself. So got to take off the original gender changer and plug it in. It's a little bit complicated here because I had a, it actually has female threads on that. So you could, anyway, it just, I guess it just wasn't meant to for exactly what I'm doing here as far as the male to female connections. Eventually though, I got it worked out, I actually took out the little thing inside that had the, uh, the female thread on it. Later, I put a slot in that so I could just screw it in more easily. But for now, I'm just doing it without any sort of any sort of shield or anything, just just straight on, straight on connectors, just the pins. And look at that, it's actually actually going back and forth. Left and right, that's good. Forward and backwards. And you can see the lights there. <laughs> you know, so they're at least on, whether you can see them moving at this point, it's honestly a little bit out of focus. Nonetheless, the important thing here was that it worked and it was time to lock it down. So I put these notches in the, the screws here so that I could actually lock it down with a, with a flathead screwdriver. A little bit of water and then took it off because I was being really cautious, didn't want to burn my hands. That's never, never a fun experience. Looking good. Plug that in, uh, blue and red lights. The blue lights are meant to be the output or slash the bi-directional pins and the red, red lights are meant to be the input pins. Whether that's actually the case, I'm not sure, but that's based on a spec that I saw, just, just found some random website, I think. So hopefully that's right. And I guess it's possible that I have this reversed. So anyway, if, if, if anybody watching this knows more about parallel ports than I do, then definitely let me know if I got something wrong. Still so though, it's awesome to see all these new lights blinking and if I do have a problem with my router in the future, at least I can know whether it points to the computer or to the router itself. Now, to be, to be fair, this uh, UC100 um, parallel port adapter that I'm using, which is specifically for CNC applications, it does have a light on it, which may tell you the same thing. Yeah, I don't really know. I. Before I even got this, I called Romax and talked to the talked to the owner, which is cool. And he, he kind of talked me through the, the problem, which was that my installation of, of Mach 3 somehow lost its mind, lost its, lost its settings. So, you know, shout out to him. Thanks a lot. That was, that was good and glad to get my router running again. As I mentioned earlier, though, this wasn't the last iteration of this board. I haven't ordered this yet, but you can see I've staggered the LEDs in this design to save some space. And then also to save some space, thanks to a new suggestion, I use some vertical LED or vertical resistors. I don't know if I'll ever order this, but if it turns out that I need to semi mass produce it, maybe you'll get one that's even smaller. So either way, I hope, I uh, hope this has been an interesting video. If, if you like it, leave me a comment and maybe I'll, maybe I'll put these for sale or we can work something out. And, um, yeah, if you, if you liked it, subscribe, leave a comment thumbs up, whatever you want. Either way, I really appreciate watching and um, I'll talk to you later. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.